This is Twit. You know, when the iPod came out, it wasn't, it was evolutionary. It wasn't a uh, amazing technological advancement on existing MP3 players. It was evolutionary. Uh, and the content was, you know, not new. It was just playing the stuff that you were already used to. When the iPhone came out, it was technically revolutionary. It was the first time we'd seen a pinch and zoom interface. There was a lot of technical innovation. And, you know, the software was, because of it, revolutionary. So I'd be very curious, uh, Alex, two questions, I guess. Is this going to be an evolutionary product or a revolutionary product? Will there be technologies on here that you go, wow, like this foveated vision you were talking about in the Discord, uh, Jason? And then the kind of follow on, will the content be evolutionary or revolutionary? What do you think, Alex? I think it's all going to be evolutionary. And I think the iPhone was evolutionary. I think the iPhone did what all other apps had map. I mean, I had a trio that I could check email. I could go on the web. I could do the, you know, I could, I had GPS. I had almost everything the iPad, iPad did. It's just what or the iPhone did. The big difference was the iPhone gave me a new interface for it. You know, it gave me a much sleeker interface. Well, to that, it. So that's I don't a think technical that, rev. I mean, the, the yeah, simple maybe. slab of glass, nobody done that before. No one had done that before, but I still, I, I would still say that it, the functionality of that phone, other than that piece of glass, that was, I, but I would still argue that, that that wasn't a huge jump forward. It was just something that, you know, seemed obvious once you saw it. <laughs> um, and, and then the, the, um, and then, but with the, and I agree that the older ones were, were evolutionary. I think the iPad, there's already tablets out there. iPad was just I a think big iPhone. I, iPad was definitely yeah. evolutionary. Yeah. I think that the I think that the evolutionary piece of this is that you know Oculus is out there, you know they there's been other things that have been out there that have shown us a lot of what's possible, but I think that you know so what this will Apple's just be a doing, polished Oculus. Well, like no, I think that it'll be more than that. I think that I think that it'll have. I mean, I think that it's going to have a much higher. I mean, I think it's going to significantly higher resolution, significantly. Um, uh, so it's a higher resolution with a higher frame rate, which makes a huge difference. Like it's just, it's hard to describe like what it, what it means when you can see a higher resolution at a higher frame rate, it really feels like you're there, you know, and it's hard for people to imagine until you see it, but it's, 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 it makes a massive difference. And so, um, but the other thing that, that I think is, I wouldn't say revolutionary, but I do think that Apple is building a pipeline for generating new content that is much more robust than what Oculus has ever had. You know, and I think that that is a huge limiter to Oculus. Oculus is hard to develop for, you know, and it becomes one of those things that's really cumbersome to build tools. Apple has been slowly building the tools in the pipeline for this for five years. You know, that when we watched USDZ come out, when we watched Creator, you know, reality, um, you know, the reality converter and the real, like all these reality tools and being able to play with it on the phone and do all the things that they're doing, all of those things become, those are all services that are designed for this headset. <laughs> you know, like they're not for the phone. You know, the phone was a place for them to play on it. And so they're, they're building this, this big apparatus because that, that has been a huge issue. Like when you want to use an o Oculus, you can't, you know, oh, I have this and now there's something on my keynote that, that they want to show me. And if I click on it, I can put this headset on and walk around it and, and look at it or rotate it and everything else. That means anybody can create something for, for the headset. You know, anybody could create potentially something in, in keynote that they can sit there and just click on these things and they're all popping up and it's an adventure that a teacher can create or, or an individual can create for other people or a salesperson. That's the kind of stuff that I think Apple's going to do that Facebook just doesn't have the tools to do. They don't have the, and so I think that that's going to be something that's really interesting. And I think Apple is very committed to it. You know, and I think that we're going to see a lot of, a lot of different kinds of content. I think that, I think Apple is going to fund um, a lot of things that go into this. This is a, this is an all or nothing thing. If they, if they actually uh, announce it, you know, um, in two weeks, I think you're going to see, or a little less than two weeks, uh, you're going to see an enormous amount of of investment into this into this uh, channel because they can't afford to lose. Like they can't. I mean, <laughs> they they can't afford to have this not not work. So, Andy, Andy, what do you think? Evolutionary, revolutionary. I th I think that their roadmap is revolutionary. I think that what they're going to show off in two weeks is evolutionary. I think that they have. I hate to start to use a, a buzzword, but it's, it's perfectly descriptive. They have the longest runway of any company that wants to get into VR and AR. They can basically have a. They can have a five year plan that 
is predicated on them making no real progress for the first couple of years, except for getting everybody primed for version three of this headset. So if all they do with this first demo is, again, show off a really cool uh, play in, in terms of packed in apps and things you get for free with the, with the device, all of your Apple TV stuff, all your iTunes stuff. We've made this really cool theater sort of thing. And also this really cool environment where you can actually be watching the watching the movie or watching the TV show with your friends. And it's like there and you're, you're and if your friend is, quote, sitting, unquote, to your left, you hear them. They're they're making wise comments from uh, from from the from the correct side of your of your face. That, I think that's that's going to be enough because, again, they have enough time to figure out. Who's going to be how what kind of what kind of people are, are buying this are going to be buying this stuff? What are they going to be using it for? We know we got games. We know we've got uh, uh, we, know, we know we have uh, uh, training uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, basically collaborative shared experiences. Do we have something that that is an iPhone is sort of device? Do we have something that's even an iPad sort of device where someone changes the way that they work because they have one of these things or uh, the ideal is going to be that someone isn't just, Hey, I've got, I'm the sort of person who can blow $3,000 today and maybe uh, $1,200 five years from now on this gadget that looks like a lot of fun. And at the end of the day, we buy an iPhone because we can see ourselves doing things that we couldn't do before. We see this going to save, it's going to solve problems for us and create opportunities. Uh, and that's why we spend a thousand dollars on a phone. So they have five years to figure out how to make that argument to us. I don't think they're going to be able to make it in the first year, but I do think that they have a five-year plan that says that here is something that you haven't thought of. Uh, that here's the implications of having a collaborative environment in which it doesn't matter that everybody has this thing strapped, strapped to their face because no one's actually looking directly at anybody's face to, to begin with in this, in this conversation. So evolutionary, then revolutionary. For I am actually going to come. I'm, I'm, be I'm betting on black and white. As long as it's not a double zero, I'm a winner. Jason, what do you think? Will this just be an evolution Red, of existing sorry. hardware or is it going to have some technologies in it that change things that are superior? Well, like Andy, I'm going to cheat. Um, <laughs> you I, I think hardware wise, it's going to be evolutionary, right? I think none of this, there have been some great videos and, and articles that have broken down the rumors about the, the hardware. We actually got a bill of lading analysis this week, right? About like what the parts are. I think everybody knows what the panels are and what, what, the what are, are they? Because very... last I saw there were conflicting reports. The information thought two 8K displays, dis uh, the, but the others said two 4K displays. What? Yeah, it's. I mean, there's a little lack of clarity, but it's going to be like fourteen hundred or fourteen to sixteen hundred dollars just in parts, right? So it's going to be very expensive, but we know it's going to be pretty good. And none of that, like Apple, is not rumored to have invented a new X for this, right? So it's going to exactly. be Johnny Ive wanted of, it to have your eyeballs a, a screen. Yeah, that, Mark Gurman still thinks that that's going to happen. Third screen that's your imagine, face. Cannot imagine now, that. I would I mean, say I that's we'll revolutionary. As stupid as it is, <laughs> it's no, dumb. as yeah. dumb as it is, it's still something nobody ever did or thought of. So it's it's it's, it's true. I mean, they they could surprise us. We've been talking about this for so long, and yet they could possibly surprise us. But they're assembling these things in a factory, so probably not. But what I would say is, while the hardware is going to be like a spare no expense evolution, it's like really nice VR hardware. Um, the revolutionary part. If it's possible, it'll be in the software and it may not be there or it may be there or we may get a glimmer of it. But I, I do agree with Andy that that is where you get some of that secret Apple sauce is what if Apple releases this thing and we all look at it and go, oh, yeah, you know, I've used a PSVR. I've used a Quest. It's like that. Well, OK, that's not revolutionary, but I do think that they're behind the scenes for seven years working on this thing. I sure hope. There are stuff, there are things in that demo that we look at that we go, oh, wow. Oh, what an interesting idea, right? Like that they have done some stuff that we haven't really seen. I would consider a foveated view be a to be unique. Nobody's doing that, right? I think somebody is, I think there's another headset out there that does foveated rendering. I, I don't think they're unique. Maybe a high I end. Even, I think I, Pimax, P I M A X has a. But no, whoever heard of them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, I, right? Like, so I think the hardware, you know, is going to be really, really good, but not beyond what we expect the best to be. 
I, I do think the wild card is software because I, I I don't think that that is a field that has been completely tilled, right? Like different people are trying different things. And if there's a through line through a lot of Apple's successes, it is that it's not that it was revolutionary, but that they had a, a way to apply the existing tech and their software to make something that redefined what that product category was. And if they can get away with something like that in June that, or start getting away with it beginning in June, I think that would be the the thing to look for is just, just how, how different is that? Or what do they always say? Blow away. It's blow away. They say <laughs> losing all sense of grammar. Uh, that that's what I'm intrigued by. Cause I love the idea that they're going to come out with some stuff for VR that everybody who's used VR up to now looks at it and goes, Oh, that's so much better than what I've seen before. I hope to see that. Well, and, and I think that, I think that the, the content is going to be important. Like what content is available, what content is sure. coming out. And, and I think that that's going to be as, as, in, as important as the software is that there's plenty of content that a bunch of us have worked on that never saw the light of day that we were like this is this would sell a lot of headsets but it was really hard <laughs> to make you know and 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 we have to remember that apple bought um next vr so there, there could be things where you have stereo vr of, again in in locations at a much higher resolution and again the frame rate and resolution are going to be a big deal if they if they turn that corner there's a lot of things that become very possible and very interesting that just haven't haven't been there yet in in the, anything that we've seen so far. So, and that takes a lot of processing. I think one of the big advantages that Apple has here is to get back to the software and the hardware. Is they're making the chips, they're making every bit, you know, they're making the chips and they're writing the software, and and they can integrate it with an iOS iOS solutions, TVOS solutions, macOS solutions, right. and that and being able to have all of those things integrated into one unified experience where you put that on as part of an, a, a bigger experience that's there. Um, is I, I think it's it, you know Apple may fumble it. I mean they that I mean there was a trash can Mac Pro. <laughs> like, so so you know, when we were there, there was you know they're like there 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 are it's you know it's not that they can't do that, but they've been working on it for so long and they built such a ramp for it. And uh, you know I think that that it'll be really interesting. To, I'm you know obviously very interested to see what happens. Yeah, and, the, and one of the biggest assets they have that no other competitor can can even approach is that they've developed a lot of good credit with their developing commu developer community. We, we talk a lot about how it's sometimes, sometimes Apple underserves their developers, but one thing they always come through with is that if they tell you that, hey, we are, we are investing in this direction for here is how we're going to do cloud sharing. Here is how we're going to do uh, resize, uh, 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 multiple displays here's how we're going to do x y and z here's our our plan for whatever if you if you are excited as a developer about what you could do with these new apis you know that apple is not going to pull the rug out from under you after two or three years they're not going to switch messaging platforms on you because somebody somebody lost a bet and some, someone lost a uh, ran out of time on their career meter and now they're uh, the uh, messaging app that they've been uh, they've been uh, championing at the, at the company is dead and someone else's messaging app is coming in instead so if you feel so and because apple also has some of the most creative and passionate and artistic developers out there they're exactly the sort of people to you know what i got three thousand dollars i'm gonna buy one of these things because i'm just curious to see what i could build with this and then after two or three years they become like the omni group this company that uh did for uh, that a uh, company that does for uh, apple vr what the omni group did for next and then apple saying we are not just writing incredibly good and innovative apps we're writing incredibly good and innovative apps that uniquely take advantage of what this hard Hardware and what this operating system and what these APIs can do. So they're they're in a really really good position. I just don't think I just don't think it's going to it's going to be for another couple of years yet. One of the things, just to I'll, I'll be quick about it, is that uh, with hardware devices like this, the first thing you have to see is who is manufacturing the sort of display technology that they're going to need to really pull this off. You're not seeing it. Uh, who's going to have the sort of camera technology that can make them pull off? what we're hoping that they'll pull off. Nobody's been, no one's, no one's been showing that stuff off yet. So we're still going to be limited to relatively low frame rate, high resolution, but not as high as what we would like, very limited field of view. So you, there's there's not a whole lot you can do when
when you can't give people a, a peripheral vision. So they're going to be stuck with what they can serve, given the components and given the technology they have available to right now. But but like I said before, so long as they say that we've got our software story on lock, we we've got the we've basically prepared this runway. We're not going to get there. We're not going to take off for three or four or five years. But oh, boy, if you've got three grand, you're going to have fun. <laughs> you're going to have fun on the, steering this plane left and right on the ground. And, and I think that they may not have a consumer device that's even aimed at the consumer that even has a, pro, you know, production for right. at least a year, if not two. Oh. So the thing is, is that this is going to be the way you get this is you're a developer and you buy the developer edition, you know, maybe the only way you buy this for a year or two, and they'll still sell millions you know, yeah. of, of those, of those developer editions. I, I, I don't think that the, I don't think that Google Glass is the, the, the champion that they, that anybody wants to emulate, but some of the smart things they did do was this is, we're calling this the explorer edition just like you alluded to before it's called the developer edition and we are not basic we're not putting these on pegs at best buy if you send us an email and and make a case for what you would do with this and why you would be useful for us as we're trying to figure out if this is a thing or not in bit and dribs and drabs we will allow you to pay fifteen hundred dollars uh, for this uh, for this thing that means that the, the first people they got were people who were ex either a journalists on expense accounts who really wanted to just rip on that and get lots of copy out of it, which is fair. This is what we do for a living. Uh, but also people who are invested emotionally and boy, I've always want, I've always thought this is a technology that could happen and I'm willing to spend a lot of money for a half baked product because this half baked product is the best that we have half baked though it is. So this is, this is why it's going to be exciting for the next few years. This episode of tech break is brought to you by ACI learning. Your IT skills are outdated in about 18 months. Stay ahead of the curve and strengthen your IT expertise with affordable certification-based learning that will launch or advance your career. Individuals use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. 